Hi students, we are on lesson 81 and I want to give you a little pep talk. Lesson 81 is a great example of a lesson that is taking all kinds of different techniques and processes and skills that you have learned over the previous 80 lessons of this course of study and even going back further into that if you really think about it and it's combining together all kinds of little steps and tricks and concepts that you've been learning along the way it is such a it is a very complex process that we're going to do but you have been practicing and honing your skills at each of these smaller steps along the way and I think this is a really good example of a lesson where a whole bunch of little things come together and you can really see how much progress you're making in your algebra so I'm excited about this lesson for that purpose it's kind of a doozy so I want to it's got a really long title but what we're really getting down to is we're going to focus on dividing complex numbers and I'm going to give you a couple of reviews. When you look at the book, you'll see that there are two other walloping, great big titles to it. I'm going to put that title in the uh, description of this video on YouTube. I always use the exact description as they are in the book. But for our notes, I don't want to boggle your mind with all of those things. I'm just going to tell you that this topic, we're going to focus on dividing complex numbers. So let's just review what a complex number is. It is expressed in the form a plus b i and remember that a and b are real numbers so I'm going to draw little arrows to remind you that a and b are real numbers and i is an imaginary number and remember that imaginary numbers often come about when we have negative signs inside of a square root house and that just blows our minds so we have to use this indication and remember that i squared equals negative one that's always a useful tool and that will come into um, that will come into play when we're doing this calculation so there is a little bit of a reminder remember that we always try to use when we've got a complex number we want to express it in that precise form we'll come back to that you'll see why that's an important reminder alright so that's tip number one is complex numbers now I want to remind you about conjugates and remember conjugates are any pair of number where you have the same first number the same second number but the sign between them is different and we have a special relationship that always happens when we multiply them is that our answer will always come into this form the first number squared the second number squared and a minus sign in between this is a very useful tool and hopefully you've got that committed to memory memory if I ever put a box around it in the notes you guys that's a pretty good sign that um, it's something important to memorize and yet I want to tell you that we're going to vary this rule ever so slightly to take into what happens when you have complex conjugates or in other words conju conjugates there my vowels went wonky on this didn't they if we are multiplying complex numbers complex conjugates which would be like a plus b i times a minus b i notice that these are still um, they're still conjugates even though they have this little imaginary bit connected to them that's going to give us a slightly different answer let me just show you how the multiplication works so that you'll never ever forget how this works let's do the multiplication of this simple pair of complex conjugates the a values multiply to give us a squared then we get plus a b i sorry a little brain freeze there then we get minus a b i then we get minus b squared i squared okay that's just straight multiplication you've done things like this lots of times let me just add them up these cancel 
switched, just like they do when we multiply regular conjugates. I didn't show you this, but we've done that lots of times. And then we get minus b squared i squared. All right, now it's starting to look messy, but look, i squared is always equal to minus 1. So what really happens is that this i squared converts to a minus 1, and that changes our sign so that when we multiply complex conjugates, our answer will always be a squared plus b squared because that i squared will convert to a minus 1 and change the sign between them. So when we're multiplying complex conjugates, notice that our result is a tiny bit different. So the sign changes because that i squared flips it, turns into a minus 1 and flips the sign on the second uh, term of the answer. So that's the second piece of information that I want you to have in your brains as we focus on dividing complex numbers. So let's take a look at example 81.1. I'm on page 336 and they're going to ask us to simplify. 2 plus 3i over 4 minus 2i. I'm giving myself lots of room to work here because things are going to get a little bit crazy. Now, first thing we want to do, just like we do in other division problems, is let's use the concept of conjugates in order to simplify our denominator. And because we're using, we've got a complex number here with an imaginary piece connected to it, we're going to use our rule of complex conjugates to give us a really um, nice shortcut on this. So we choose the conjugate of our denominator. That's always our first step. Multiply top and bottom by conjugate of the bottom. The conjugate of this is 4 plus 2i. So we'll multiply the top as well. 4 plus 2i to use our rule to simplify the denominator. And so our rule is right here. We square the first term. So we know that the, um, the new denominator is going to be 16. And it's going to be plus the b term squared, which is a 2. 2 equals b. And so that is 4. So we know that our new denominator is going to be 20. Yeah? Makes sense, right? So that's our new denominator. Now our job is we have to do the multiplication. The top is not a sweet little conjugate, so we're going to have to multiply that out. So let's do that here. 2 plus 3i times 4 plus 2i. Multiplying, 2 times 4 is 8. 4 times 3i is 12i. 2i times 2 is 4i. And 2i times 3i is positive 6i squared. Okay? This turns into a negative 1, which in turn flips that into a minus sign. So now we have 8 plus 16i minus 6. Double checking my work. And now we can combine are like terms to get, and I'm, this then fills in up here, I'm going to squeeze it in, it would be 2 plus 16i, okay? So that is where we're at at this point in our problem. I'm going to slide, oh gosh, you guys didn't get to see me doing that whole multiplication. I'll um, go ahead and pause me if you want, and you can follow that multiplication of the two complex numbers. I will wait for you if you want to pause me and take a look at that together. Okay, so that leads us 
to this value. We calculated our numerator, our denominator right here. We calculated our numerator down here by multiplying the two complex numbers. And I want to, I'm going to copy this number in the box because it's not in its simplified form yet. It's 2 plus 16i over 20. Now, that looks pretty good, but remember, we always want complex numbers in A plus B I format. We don't want to have them sharing a denominator. So we're going to split this apart. We're going to make it 2 over 20 plus 16 over 20 I. And as you can see, we can simplify both of those. This would be 1 over 10 plus, and let's see, we can take 4s out of both of those. So that would be 4 over 5 I. This is the preferred form of the answer because we have separate fractions representing the A and B, and each fraction is reduced to its lowest term. So this is the preferred form of that fraction, or of the answer. All right, example 81.2. I'm going to have you guys do together. Again, this is on page 337. And I just want to show you a little trick that they're playing on you. It looks like this. It says simplify... 4 minus 2i, I made that look like 1, over 2i minus 3. Okay, some students will jump into this and get all excited and go, oh, conjugate of the bottom, 2i minus 3, the times 2i plus 3. Whoa, except John Saxon messed with your head here. This, notice, is not in standard form for a complex number. We need to rewrite this problem as 4 minus 2i over minus 3 plus 2i. See how he flipped that on you? Very sneaky. So minus 3 is your a, 2 is your b, and so the conjugate of this, as you guys probably don't need me to tell you, would be like so. This minus sign goes along for the ride in front of the a, and it's just this in-between sign that we change in order to create the conjugate. I will back out of your business now and let you guys work on example 81.2 together. Make sure that your final answer is in proper complex format with the A and the B as separate numbers. They can each be fractions, but give them their own little numerator and denominator and don't share them over one bar. Fraction bar. You know what I mean. Okay, good luck with that. Have fun.